This is KGW News at Noon. It wasn't all that surprising, but it was historic. On a party line vote this morning, the House Judiciary Committee voted to send articles of impeachment to the House floor. Jennifer Johnson explains where we go from here. Mr. Nagoose. Aye. Mr. Nagoose votes aye. Ms. McBath. Aye. The House Judiciary Committee taking its historic vote to pass articles of impeachment against President Trump one day later than expected. The articles charging the president with abuse of power and obstruction of Congress. And there are 23 ayes and 17 noes. The article is agreed to. The president blasting Democrats. And I tell you what, someday there'll be a Democrat president and there'll be a Republican House and I suspect they're going to remember it. The critical vote was delayed late last night after many Americans had gone to bed. Democrats blaming Republicans for dragging out the meeting for 14 hours. Republicans accusing Democrats of ambushing them, delaying the final vote to get more media attention. I have never in my entire life seen such an unfair, rigged railroad job against the President of the United States. Democrats say they have presented overwhelming evidence the president pressured Ukraine to investigate political rival Joe Biden while delaying military aid and obstructing the congressional investigation. There's a pattern that the president has shown us over and over and over again, that he's willing to do anything, cheat, give away America in exchange for winning election. The months-long investigation expected to end next week in a climactic vote on the House floor, with lawmakers deciding whether President Trump becomes the third president in history to be impeached. Then in January, the Senate will hold an impeachment trial. Majority Leader Mitch McConnell is now saying there is no chance the Senate will vote to remove the president from office. Jennifer Johnson, NBC News, Washington. Overseas Brexit will soon be a done deal after the Conservative Party's election victory. Prime Minister Boris Johnson delivered the largest Conservative Party win since Margaret Thatcher back in 1987. This has implications in Europe and here in the U.S. President Trump congratulated the Prime Minister on his great win on Twitter. He says Britain and the United States will now be free to strike a massive new trade deal after Brexit. This, this election means that getting Brexit done is now the irrefutable, irresistible, unarguable decision of the British people. And with this election, I think we've put an end to all those miser miserable threats of a second referendum. Johnson promises to get Brexit passed by the end of January. Closer to home, the storm that pushed through this week brought plenty of snow to the Cascades. This is what it looked like at Snoqualmie Pass in Washington yesterday. The ski resort isn't open yet, but officials expect more snow on the way and lifts to open up in the next few days. And in Oregon, this is a live look along Highway 26 at Government Camp. The pavement wet, but all that snow is cleared off the road. You can see it off to the side. If you're heading to Mount Hood or the central part of the state, you really shouldn't have much issue getting over the past today. Let's bring in meteorologist Rod Hill now. Rod, how does it look for skiers and boarders as we head into the weekend? Tolerable. I mean, I think, you know, people that ski and board a lot have a, a minimum snow depth, I think, in their mind. Usually it's somewhere around 30 inches. And, of course, you want more than that. But we do have 30 inches on the ground. And you showed some of the uh, past conditions, which are good. Boy, the air just keeps being warmer up there overall than that I'm, I'm thinking that it uh, should be. Here's the radar right now. It's really pretty quiet north and south of Portland. We've seen some light snow up around Mount Hood in just the past hour, but really about 10 minutes ago that went to either nothing or flurry. So the radar up around uh, Mount Hood is quiet right now. And that past camera that you showed, I wanted to point out the temperature that it's now 35 degrees. So it wasn't really expecting it to be that warm today, but for travel, that's fantastic. Um, and here are the latest ski report numbers. Timberline and Meadows each sharing a base of 32 inches. That means for the most part, the coverage is solid. You probably keep an eye out for some larger rocks, but for the most part, the coverage is solid. Ski Bowl has their cosmic tubing set to go this weekend, and I'm sure they've moved some snow around, so they probably have more than eight inches on the ground that they're doing there. And Bachelor now reporting at least a base at over 26. These are the last 24, in, uh, 24 hour snow amounts, nine, 11, 10 inches. And if you go back to Tuesday, when we start tracking this week's active weather, we said surely we'll get 20 inches up there. And if you add all the snow that's fallen and compressed and fallen, they picked up about two feet. 
So this weekend, I would say most people that go to the mountain are probably going to be happy, Christine. And the temperatures up there in the daytime hours will be in the 30s and the winds will be fairly light. That's pretty pleasant. Back to you. OK, thanks so much, Rod. The search for a new Oregon State University president is over. Today, it announced, it, it introduced rather, Dr. King Alexander. He'll replace Ed Ray, who's stepping down after 17 years. Dr. Alexander will officially take the position on July 1st of 2020. He most recently worked at LSU as president and chancellor. So we are thrilled, thrilled to be a part of this institution, to be a part of the uh, one of two land grants, sea grant, space grant, and sun grant universities. And we look forward to working with each of you to promote inclusive excellence so that everybody is impacted by what we do. Oregon State's Board of Trustees approved a five-year deal. Portland Mayor Ted Wheeler is putting forward a plan aimed at cutting carbon emissions and increasing the use of renewable energy. He held a joint news conference with PGE and TriMet. The mayor said the city can't tackle climate change alone and it needs partners to make it happen. So here are some of the proposed changes. The mayor wants to create an advisory board for the Portland Clean Energy Fund. He also wants to restrict fossil fuel expansion and require more bike parking in buildings. The city also wants to salvage and reuse building materials when buildings are demolished. Mayor Wheeler also made it clear he doesn't want oil trains running through the city. I will not allow the city of Portland to become a fossil fuel export colony for Canada trying to ship their resources to China. It's not going to happen here. Wheeler will be talking more about this at the City Club of Portland Friday Forum. It'll start in about 10 minutes and we're going to be streaming it on KGW.com. Washington Attorney General Bob Ferguson is pushing for three new gun control measures. He says they're necessary to prevent mass shootings in Washington state. This is just the latest push to try to limit access to certain firearms and high capacity magazines. Greg Copeland explains how this time the AG is taking it a step further. Ferguson is calling for a bill that would require you to have a license to sell ammunition. It would create background checks for ammo, ban violent felons and some other individuals from owning or buying it, and also make it illegal for firearms dealers to knowingly sell ammo to those people. Now, Ferguson also advocated for a bill that limits the capacity of magazines sold in Washington, gun magazines, to 10 rounds. That's similar to what a handful of other states have already done. And he's again proposing a ban on assault style rifles for the fourth time, saying it is necessary to prevent mass shootings. But what is a mass shooting? First, there is no agreement on what constitutes a mass shooting. So the best definition is vague. Usually it's at least four people shot in the same incident, including gang or drug related shootings. Now, under that criteria, there have been four mass shootings in Washington state just this year a gang-related shooting in Kennewick in July, an unsolved shooting in East Tacoma in August, five killed on the Yakima Reservation in June in multiple locations, and four shot and wounded at an Everett apartment last month. Now, none of those is considered an active shooter incident as defined by the FBI, which gets you know, most of the national attention. You have to go back to 2016 to find an active shooter with multiple casualties, Burlington's Cascade Mall and Muckleteo. Now, today, the father of a victim from that shooting in Muckleteo advocated for the bans he, we mentioned. His son was among four people shot by a 19-year-old gunman armed with an assault-style rifle and high-capacity magazine. Paul Kramer's son was injured in that shooting. In 43 seconds, killed three people, seriously injured my son. These high-capacity magazines have no business in civilian hands. Well, we talked to a gun shop owner today who countered that these measures won't address the root of the problem because felons and criminals who are trying to get those guns are not buying them legally at gun shops. That was Greg Copeland reporting. It's also really important to take the numbers in context. Under some definitions, there were 337 mass shootings last year in the U.S. But again, the FBI doesn't track mass shootings, just what it calls active shooter incidents. There were 27 of those. Four of them involved assault style rifles. Most of the 85 deaths were from handguns. It'll soon be much easier to get help for people in a mental health crisis. The FCC is creating a three digit number to reach the National Suicide Prevention Lifeline. It would work just like 911. The commission agreed to use the three digit number 988. But this new number change could actually take months to take effect. 
In the meantime, if you or someone you know needs help, this is the phone number to call us right on your screen. 1-800-273-8255. There is always someone available to talk 24-7. We are hearing another person in the area got sick from vaping. The new case is the first one in Clark County. Health officials say the woman in her 40s was hospitalized with a lung illness. She was vaping both nicotine and THC products, and she bought them at local licensed retailers. The Centers for Disease Control say more than 2,400 people have gotten sick and 52 have died.